All right. Uh, good morning. Um, I made the switch on my project table from the engines to do some sewing. I had a pair of pants that I needed to hem that I have owned for 10 years and finally got around to hemming because that's how often I wear them and remember that they need a hem. Uh, so I'm also going to do a bunch of um, small drawstring bags. I make them for dice, for role-playing games and stuff, but you know, they're good for all kinds of stuff. Uh, and they're also a quick and easy sewing project to uh, scratch my sewing itch when I get it. Um, but I buy whatever remnants I find because they're much cheaper to get fabric that way. And um, yeah, I like it's a pretty simple pattern. Uh, these, this is a 14 inch by 10 inch piece. Uh, and I do line them, uh, so I have whatever solids was around for liner. Uh, and the size that I make is just, I stick my hand on my cutting board like this and double it so it's usually uh, six, seven or eight inches when I set my hand down and then I just make a 14 inch wide piece and same thing for making the rest of the pattern. That's about how deep the bag will end up, so my whole hand will go in there. Sometime I make them deeper. Uh, but um, to stitch these up, and this is a piece of fabric that I don't actually know what the right side or the outside should be. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the largely silver side being the outside. So I'm going to pin these up real quick. And like I said, I don't really use a set pattern. I just quick and dirty sew these, uh, which is another thing that they're a nice project because even if you're not an experienced uh, sewer or tailor or what have you, uh, they're a very forgiving project and they will sort themselves out at the end. Um, so like when I'm cutting this fabric, uh, you know, everybody, for major projects you're supposed to pre-wash and iron everything and for these little pieces I don't bother doing any of that unless I've got a really wrinkly piece that I need to iron just enough so that I can cut squares like this. Um, and I'm pinning. Uh, this is going to be the top. And then because there's a drawstring, I need to mark that there'll be an opening on the side of the bag. And then I'm just going to pin around the edges. Uh, and I just line up my corners as best they go. And if it's not square on the end here, I just... Uh, line it up as I pin and this is the first spot where this pattern is just going to be very forgiving. Uh, that doesn't end up quite right lined up, but we'll stick our pin in it and then turn the corner for the bottom and I could do these without pinning but honestly I find pinning to be just really handy to help hold it all together and I don't sew fast enough that I can or I don't sew often enough that I'm good at lining things as I go so it's simpler for me to just throw these pins in So, one side, I'm going to pin this liner up and then throw a stitch around the edge of both of these and continue pinning. So, alright, uh, I'll pin the liner and then we'll get some sewing done. Okay, 
uh, grabbed the sewing machine and brought it over into the project space. The camera didn't move, that's why this crack in the table is going to be in the same spot. Uh, right now I just have some gray thread from when I did my that hem on the pants, because uh, that's what's in here. Uh, this first stitch is going to be invisible, because it's going to be on the inside, so it doesn't actually matter what color it is. Um, and because I don't have a pattern, I can just do whatever size seam I'd like. Uh, I usually put a uh, I usually put like a half inch or so. And this is what ten millimeter. I don't know what my markings are. Yeah, that must be ten millimeter. Okay, so a little under half an inch, like at ten millimeter, because that's just the line I can see and I'm using on this plate here. Uh, and well. Find my pedal under the table. And I double pinned for the gap where the or the drawstring is going to go, rotate to the top there, and there's my snipper. size requirement for that gap on the drawstring is that it be wide enough for me to get my um, safety pin through to pull the string so and the double pins close together are just a way to remind yourself otherwise I've gotten lazy and totally stitched right through that. And then I had to go back and pull my seam out to get the spot for my drawstring to go in. And you don't have to do that, but I like to lock a stitch on the corner right before I turn just because if something happens on that corner and the thread breaks then the rest of the stitches are also locked um, and I don't know if you remember earlier on the channel when I had that Kenmore sewing machine that I rescued out of the garbage. Um, when I was done with it, I did a little bit of... Oh, come on. Test sewing and made a few of these bags with it. And I've rescued a fair number of sewing machines and done sewing machine tune-ups and all kinds of stuff, so... Uh, mostly because they're a mechanical thing, and I've been sewing since I was a kid. So, anyhow, there we go, and there's the gap for my, can you see, nope, the thread doesn't show up because I picked one that actually, or because it just matches here, so. Well, I have my gap for my drawstring in there, and that's what's important on that piece. Now, uh, I'm going to set that there because I can. 
and so I'm not doing a pattern. That means that to make sure that this liner fits this bag, I'll line up, I'm just going to pull this straight across there and line the fold on the liner up with the fold on the bag that I just, the outside of the bag I just made. And you can, if you're making a bunch of these, you can stitch all of the bag outsides uh, or shells and then take a pin and mark this. But as you can see, I just flatten it, line it up together, and get my needle in line so that these this liner will be the same size as that shell for later. And then I don't need to put a drawstring in the liner, so that just gets a straight stitch. And when I sized it, it didn't quite line up on that 10 millimeter line, so got to Keep an eye on what I'm using as the edge of the foot to line up an even space on the outside of the fabric. And uh, luckily, again, because this kind of a project is very forgiving. If you don't get a very straight if you don't get this line very straight, it will, especially the liner, is gonna look okay. And if you don't get the line on the outside of for the shell stitch straight, um, as long as it's not incredibly wavy because the bag is a drawstring bag. As long as the bag is in use and the drawstrings are pulled, or it's got stuff in it, you will not notice the wavy stitching on the shell very much either. So, again, a very forgiving project, especially if you uh, want to learn how to sew. Um, also, like the reason I have all these, well, I'm going to end up switching, but uh, the reason I have random colors for sewing with is that I do projects with wooden thread spools, or rather I know people that do a lot of projects with wooden thread spools, so I end up buying a lot of random I hmm. guess I'll have to go find an example uh, of random thread at thrift stores. And let's see, what's in the machine right now is this with a Coates Super Sheen label on it and a 19 cent price tag. Uh, my guess is this is a spool of thread from the 80s maybe the 70s, um, but properly stored thread will last a very long time, so if you are buying at the thrift store, you can give it a try, and if it stitches well, uh, then go for it. It's not like you have to own th fresh thread. Uh, some of the old thread will get bad and snap, so if you're sewing, and you're having a lot of trouble with broken thread, definitely try fresh new thread. But um, yeah, a lot of old stuff works just fine if you have it around. Um, and yeah, this sewing machine is from a thrift store too. Uh, not quite as good a bargain as the free one that I drug out of the garbage and refurbished, but this one sewed pretty well when I got it, so. Uh, 
if you find one at a thrift store, they can be a pretty good way to get started. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to pin this bag together. So I've got the shell, what will be the outside, the good side, what have you, is still facing itself. The um, seam allowance is still out here for the shell and the liner here now needs to go in the bag. We're going to be turning all this twice here. So the first time we turn it, we turn the liner so that now the liner has the seam on the inside and this is eventually what your hand will touch on the inside of the bag and the other nice thing about this project is it's really easy to get it put together so I turn this stick my hand in and stretch my thumb and my pinky out that pokes the corners out and then as you pull the shell of the bag out and hold your hand straight like that it pushes the corners into the corners very nicely and then you just have to let it sit flat and now at the top here I just need to rotate I'm gonna match these two seams so but when you've got your the bottom and the bottom it'll hold still for a second while you just gently rotate that and then fold the two allowances here over and this is the trickiest part of the whole procedure is holding these four layers where you want them and getting a pin through without stabbing yourself so the pin goes down through all four layers and then back up through and uh, even if I'm freehand stitching this the bags I always pin these seams flat to make sure that they don't fold up on me and now uh, well, finish pinning around the top edge of the bag. Uh, you need to leave an opening on the bag so that you can turn it to get all the correct parts on the outside. So we're going to double pin again as a reminder. Uh, this opening I usually leave, is that like an inch and a half, two inches? five to ten centimeters. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to turn the bag if you leave a little bit larger space there. Uh, and if you get it too small and can't get it to turn, you know, again, you just have to be pulling your... You have to rip your seams out until you get space to make it turn. And as you can see, all I'm doing to pin this is just stretching it and then holding the spot and sticking a pin in. And that is because we used that hand trick to get the bottom together by doing this. The bottom is held in place and we just sort of flatten it up to the top 
and then we can just stretch it and pin it so you can see it's pinned like that all the way inside and our two bags ended up a little bit different sizes with the bottom seam allowance but another spot where this project is very forgiving that error is now going to get corrected when we stitch the top and when we're done no one will be able to see that so uh, we'll get the rest of that stitched up and uh, move on to turning it okay uh, I'm going to stitch the top of this bag um, and I managed to catch, there we go, oh, yeah, all right. So these bags are about the smallest thing that I can sew on this machine. Uh, so it's always a bit of a challenge to get them on the table uh, because I have that extra bit of fabric to take up. I'm going to use the widest mark on here, the 20 centimeter mark, and start at one side of the hole that I'm leaving to turn the bag. Uh, this is still that just random gray thread. And we'll go around the top. And then here, we'll stitch these seams open. Um, and I already remember the thing that I forgot to double check, but we'll do that in a second here. That was the other side of the spot I marked to leave open, so all right, so remember to leave this this space open here to turn this, and the thing that I forgot to double check was my hole for running my string to make sure that sometimes I'll, because I'm randomly putting that space for running the string along here, I will accidentally put it real high and then when I'm stitching this part we'll stitch through it, but nope, that hole is right down there below my th line, so that's good. Um, but again, even if you do that, uh, this is a super forgiving project, so you can just pull the seam a little apart and make a new hole. So, alright. Um, I need to turn this, and then we will have to find the right thread to top stitch it. So, I guess, um, I'll come back for that. Alright. I'm going to turn this. So this is the space we left, and we just have to start pulling everything from one half of the bag through that hole, so we got that, and now we'll poke the next section through, And as you can see, you have to, since you have to fit everything through that hole, it is a lot easier if you leave that hole bigger. Um, when you finish everything, uh, 
Uh, sometimes if you leave that space too big, it can be harder to finish. But since this project is all about doing, being able to do fast and dirty forgiving work, we're allowed to use a slightly bigger hole. So, we pulled all the fabric through the hole, and now we've got the bag this shape, and now we got to poke the liner back down in it. So, again, just poke around in there, keep pushing against those corners to work the corners out. Uh, you can pick them from the outside, but honestly it's way easier to poke them from the inside. And this corner is really stubborn, so I'm going to actually... Um, there's my slit. Uh, sticking my finger up through the slit instead of going through the liner. And without the liner in the way, can really push that corner out. All right. Now, again, holding the liner, giving it all a tug, and since we already lined it up when we stitched the top the first time, and see, this comes out just like that, all lined up, top and bottom. Uh, I got the seam on the inside and the outside close, but not perfect. Um, that's another thing that, because this project is very forgiving, you won't notice it unless you're, you know, in a competition and getting judged. So, uh, to finish the bag, we got to put three more stitches in it, uh, and they're all along the top here, so I'm going to start by, where is, I like to start pinning on the hole, so there's the hole we left for turning, so I'll put one pin in the middle of that, and now and then one on each side of it, just to help hold that in place. And throw pins around the edge again. Um, there. Yeah. All right. That is pinned up, and I need to um, make sure that the rest of the inside of the seam is folded open. Um, there. So what I did was carefully poke this apart. I uh, use a chip, chopstick or anything that you can poke in there and I just picked a direction to push the whole seam as I stuck my scissors in and then the one side of the seam will stay put and you can just 
pop the other side and then they'll both be flat in there and the reason to do that is to make it easier to pull the string through later and now that I've done that get the pin on that there so um, yeah that's pinned up and now because we're stitching on the outside um, I need to find a good color that actually matches this or pick one that's gonna highlight it so we'll be back with different colored thread okay back I found a tan thread for the bobbin and a lavender thread for the top so that as we stitch this it should all match and I was telling you there's three stitches to finish this off well they are um, three straight lines that I do uh, two for the string path for the uh, drawstring and so that just needs to start lined up with the bottom of my drawstring hole here which is right there and um, to do this there is a tiny trick to it and that is that you need to make sure your pins don't stick far too far down um, which is why so we're making a stitch here a stitch there and a tops a stitch up at the top of the bag and the reason I start with this first one on the bottom is because we're gonna be pulling pins as we go very slowly those two are the ones that only hold held the um, seam open on the inside and then uh, I'm only pulling these top pins far enough back so that they're not getting hit by the needle as it stitches past. And then um, because this is a straight stitch this is the these three are the only three stitches that you need to concentrate on getting straight because they will be you know every time you open the bag you will see if they wave a ton uh, but again uh, when the bag is closed it'll be all wrinkly and you won't notice any of that so I'm sure you noticed while I was stitching that 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 stitch was way out here and I don't have any lines on the plate. Uh, if you want to you can always stick a piece of tape or something out here for you to reference against. Um, it's not cheating like the plate already comes with marks on it so whatever you need to do um, to help you get your seam straight or have a target to sh uh, stitch against so alright I got that last one in I'm gonna put 
the top edge in and then we will come back and put the center line in. Uh, the top edge I, I'm doing second because that is going to close the hole in the top of the bag and then all the pins will be out. Um, so, and I'm just picking a very tight edge here, so I'm using the inside of this feed dog space. Um, if you want to do a smaller margin on this top stitch, you certainly can. Um, but uh, you have to make sure that you are getting all of the, uh, you're getting both the uh, shell of the bag or rather the outside and the liner together in this top stitch. So the smaller the space you have here, the more careful you have to be about the fold on the inside. So that you get both halves of the bag stitched together and I'm trying to there pull my tails out there we go So that's the top stitch. My new thread is even uh, matches the outside real well and the inside too. Uh, so I matched that up real good. And this is what I was talking about for that verge. If you want this stitch to be closer to the edge there, you have to be much more careful about the top fold edge of the bag because if you miss catching the liner on the inside uh, you have to like you have to catch the liner that's what's important about doing that top stitch because that's what closes the hole that you used to turn the bag and get it the right side out and then the last time around is the other side of the drawstring passage so and since I've stitched and I'm down the middle here. I don't need to pin it because it's holding everything in place. Um, so I just have to make sure that I can see the other edge of my drawstring hole. Okay, there's the other edge of my drawstring hole. And that lines up on the 15, which is really convenient. Uh, the 15 on my plate there. And since I didn't have to be pulling pins, I could stitch pretty quickly across there. That's the last stitch. That's the last stitch in this bag. And all that's left now is to put a drawstring in. 
So that's that. There. Get the sewing machine out of the way. So that's the bag and it's the right size for my hand. Uh, and we'll just put a drawstring through there, um, which I don't actually know where my drawstring material is right now. Um, I use uh, piping because it's cheap and flexible and I've got a supply shop near me that does um, an outlet shop that sells it you know for five or ten cents a yard um, so it makes a really convenient drawstring and comes in a lot of colors uh, but you know anything you can find old shoelaces if you got shoelaces can go through there and um, it's the most fiddly part of the project, but I don't have it handy with me, so I can't, uh, or I don't have it right. Uh, actually, I do know where it went. I'll be right back, and then we'll put the drawstring in. All right, I was wrong. I can't find the drawstring that I want to put in here. So uh, I make batches of these, and then we'll come back, and I'll demonstrate the drawstring thing. Uh, I do it the same way everybody else does. Uh, and, you know, like all crafting and projects, most of it is the way that you can get it to work. Because um, I'm certain that as soon as I started this and told everybody I do not pre-wash or iron this, uh, there were a lot of people that uh, sew and can't imagine sewing without pre-washing and ironing all your fabric before you cut it. But, um, yeah, that's, I guess, the project for this week, and we'll see. Uh, it's been kind of chilly out, uh, and like I've said before, I only have so much project space, so if I'm going to sew, that's the only space I have to do anything, uh, and I can't do engines and sew at the same time, because they both use the same table. Uh, and we'll see what happens next week.